Hey everybody. This is the 20 gallon tank I keep in my wife's room for her to enjoy. And I'm treating it for cyanobacteria. I did a water change not long ago and I found out that a lot of what I thought was just common blackbeard algae I wasn't too concerned about turned out to be quite a bit of cyanobacteria. So in that video I had discussed the possibility of using erythromycin to treat instead of the Ultralife product that I normally use. And several of my viewers apparently did a little research on their own, which was very helpful to me. And they let me know that according to the manufacturer, erythromycin will indeed kill beneficial bacteria in your tank. It'll kill your nitrifying bacteria. If you can see that uh, Cory Doris there on the left, that emerald Cory, that is the oldest surviving fish I have from back in the very, very earliest days of when we were keeping fish. It's an emerald Cory named Swimmy because I found it very unusual that a catfish swam around so much. I always thought of catfish as being bottom dwellers that just kind of moved around on the bottom, and I was delighted to see how much activity I got out of that emerald quarry, and I just kept calling him Swimmy, and eventually that just became his name. And in fact, he's a her, and she spawned for me several times before, but I've never gotten any babies from her. Uh, at any rate... When I decided I was going to use the erythromycin, my concern was whether or not it would hurt my nitrifying bacteria. I wasn't going to bother with it if it wound up that that was going to be the case, and, and that is the case. So I did not uh, opt to use the erythromycin, but instead, this time, we've used the Ultralife Blue-Green Stain Slime Remover, and that's why we've got the air stone in there. It requires a great deal of oxygen for the process to occur. And being that this is a 20 gallon tank, it's heavily planted, the plants use up a lot of oxygen at night. Uh, it's not really heavily stocked, but I'd better safe than sorry, so I've got a really, really high amount of air bubbles being run through this tank. Uh, the filter on it's not really big either, so I don't get a ton of circulation. Uh, so all in all, I think I'm better off going with the very large uh, air stone rather than the smaller one, you know, a standard size stone. The thing I want to discuss, though, is something that's probably already crossed some of your minds, and that is, well, if it's going to hurt your nitrifying bacteria, why don't you just go ahead and take your sponge filter out? You know, the, the um, I got to hang on the back filter. It's got that little, for lack of a better word, I'll call it a sponge, that little black coarse uh, piece in front of the filter. That's your bio filter. That's the housing where your uh, nitrifying bacteria is supposed to live, and that is supposed to be enough surface area to allow enough bacteria to grow that it could handle the bio load of the specified tank. In this case, the filter is for a 20 gallon tank and this is a 20 gallon tank. I usually go uh, with a double size filter. Uh, in this case, it just has a 20 on it. So in theory, if we had a tank that had uh, a normal amount of fish in it for a 20 gallon tank, I'm not going to get into a stocking density, but a lightly stocked tank and it was all glass, no nothing but just fish and glass, that filter would be able to house enough biomaterial to deal with that kind of bio load. So if that were my tank, I could simply take that bio sponge out, put it in a tank downstairs with an air stone for a few days, and then when the treatment was over, do a big water change, run some carbon for a few days to get any last little bit of it out of there, and then put my biofiltration back in. Uh, there's a couple problems with that. One is going to be that I would have to keep the bio sponge alive for at least a week because this is going to take at least two treatments back to back so we're looking at probably four to six days somewhere in that kind of time period I don't know how long the bio material will live without a food source but if I just put it in some water in the basement it doesn't, there's no ammonia being produced in there. I would have to feed it. I would have to oxygenate it. I would have to set up a tank just to keep my bacteria alive while I waited to treat this tank just so I could put it back in here, etc. And that's more hassle than I'm willing to go through right there. However, it gets a lot more complicated than that. It's not nearly as simple as just pulling that bio sponge out and letting it live and keeping it alive in the basement until I'm done. This tank is not a bare glass tank. This tank is loaded with rocks and pieces of wood and substrate, and therefore it has bacteria growing all over the place in this tank. A lot of it is nitrifying bacteria. 
So the bio sponge itself does not necessarily house enough to treat this whole tank since the bio load is spread out over the whole tank. The bio material that's on the rocks and the wood, um, you know, the nitrifying bacteria, that's eating up some of the ammonia. You know, so, so the filter itself, the physical biofilter and the hang on the back is not getting a full load of ammonia. The tank itself is dealing with a lot of it. So I would be taking an inadequately supplied bio sponge and trying to keep that alive for a week and then putting it back in the tank and it would not be able to handle the capacity. Furthermore, what happens to all of the bio material in the tank that dies? What happens to all that cyanobacteria that dies? What happens to all the other bacteria in there that's killed by the erythromycin? That all is organic waste, and that all breaks down, and it turns into ammonia. So I'd be putting an inadequately supplied bio sponge back in, into a tank that I've just blown up a bunch of dead biomaterial in there, and now I've got all kinds of more ammonia being produced. Uh, it's a recipe for disaster. Even knowing all of that and knowing what I'm doing and being on top of all of that, it still would throw my tank all out of whack. I don't mind killing off the cyanobacteria in the tank. I don't want to kill off my nitrifying bacteria in the tank. I'd have to deal with cloudy water and keeping an eye on everything and making sure all the levels were correct. And this is one of those tanks that just turns over like a machine for me. I never have to worry about it. Um, so I'm not going that route. I'm not messing with all of that stuff. I know that this blue-green slime stain remover works. Uh, I know it doesn't harm my nitrifying bacteria. I know it doesn't harm my fish or my plants. All I got to do is put an air stone in the tank for a few days and do a water change when I'm done. And that's about the speed I'm up to. I don't feel like messing with all that other stuff. Uh, it's midsummer. I'm doing a lot of stuff outside. You know, I haven't been spending a lot of time with the fish uh, in general right now to take on a project where I'm going to have to carefully monitor my um, nitrifying bacteria and my bio load and all that kind of stuff. That's just more than I want to do right now. Uh, maybe sometime in the future we'll mess around with that when I've got another tank. Uh, I do have a tank in the basement I've been doing some stuff with. It doesn't have any fish in it, but it's got some wood in it and it's got a filter running on it. And uh, I think I want to do a little video about that tank too. I want to talk about what's been going on in there even though it sounds like a lot of nothing. At any rate, make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss uh, that video if I ever get around to doing it. You won't miss the conclusion of what happens to this tank uh, or anything else I've got going on with any of my other tanks. So don't forget this one is my wife's tank. It's got its own playlist like most of my tanks do. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you real soon on the next one.